Well, good morning, and welcome to your weekly message from First Congregational Church, Milford, New Hampshire. I'm your pastor, Al Hoyt. Today is Thursday, April 11th. Lots of stuff going on today. I'll be over at uh, Bedford Falls at uh, 10 o'clock this morning to do my uh, regular monthly communion and worship service. At 7.30 this evening, will be choir rehearsal here in the sanctuary. Tomorrow, April 12th, the church office will be closed. Sunday, April 14th, uh, our worship leader is Teresa Rogers, our intern. Uh, at 9 a.m. is Bible study in the parish house. At 10 is our church service in person and being live streamed via YouTube. Following the church service, the church teaching committee will be meeting in my office. Also following the church service is coffee hour. Um, from 2.30 to 4, the Girl Scouts will be meeting in the parish house. Monday, April 15th, your greeting articles are due. Tuesday, April 16th, from 6.30 to 9, the Sauhegan Valley Chorus will be rehearsing here in the sanctuary. Wednesday, April 17th, from 9 to 11, the Garden Friends will be here. And the Board of Trustees will have their meeting in the Parish House at 7.30. It's a hybrid meeting, and the link will go out that afternoon. And again, Thursday, April 18th, will be choir rehearsal. And Friday, April 19th, uh, Christian Camp Campership Scholarships, say that three times fast, um, will be available. Uh, the applications are due in the church office on Friday, the 18th, 19th. Again, Christian Camp Campership Scholarship applications are due in the church office on April 19th. On Saturday, April 20th, uh, at 7.30 a.m., the men's breakfast will be at the Masonic Hall. Um, Sunday, April 21st, is New Member Sunday. We'll bring, be bringing in some new members to the congregation. I hope many of you will be here for that. Um, and also, Sunday, April 21st, the, at noon, at the DPW Barn on South Street, will be a celebration of gratitude and honor to honor our own Bob Courage for his 70 years of service to the town of Milford. Um, I hope many of you will be there and honor Bob and all of the incredible work that he's done over these years. Um, we still have signups available for coffee hour and the April potluck. Uh, the April potluck is mom, grandma's favorites. Um, please sign up, help host and donate snacks for coffee hour. The sign up sheets for all coffee hour between now and the end of June will be out on Sundays and the sign up sheets are always on the refrigerator in the parish house. And the spring auction will be on Saturday, May 4th. If you can help out with the spring auction, please contact either Jim or Janelle George. They're looking for help with the snack bar, helping people take their items to their vehicles, help with setup, and with breakdown. And then, of course, um, as we're going forward, the 100 Holds of Golf raffle is still live. Um, you can still make um, get yourself a raffle ticket or two. Um, on the link that has been sent out. If you need the link again, just let me know and we can send it right out to you. Again, every, every ticket that is sold through that link, the church gets half the value of the, the price of the ticket. That's for every $20 ticket that's bought, the church gets $10. It's a pretty good deal. So please sign up and help out not only your church, but the community as a whole. All of the money that the Rotary Club raises goes directly to grants and gifts um, to different nonprofits around the town. Things like the Boys and Girls Club, um, where, you know, things that we've done for um, um, the um, Milford Thrives, things that we've done for Boys, Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, and there are programs like that all over the place. Of course, you know Centennial Park right here in town. That's a project that's maintained by the Rotary Club. And there's a lot of events that go on, like the Senior Citizen Barbecue. That's one of the, the um, programs that's funded. And by the way, the Senior Citizen Barbecue will be on May 1st, Wednesday, May 1st, at the Boys and Girls Club. 
It is absolutely free for any senior citizen that wants to come. Uh, most years we serve well over 300 people, and we hope to see you there this year too. Usually our church picks up a couple of tables, so uh, hope to see many of you there. So with Easter and Easter gone and Humor Sunday in, in the past, and I really enjoyed Humor Sunday this year. It was a lot of fun, and I think I got a lot of positive feedback from it. And I chuckle about it because one of the first, um, when I first came here after I was called the very first Sunday I was here, um, there were two questions asked of me. And the first one was, um, what word do you use in the Lord's Prayer? Now, for those of you who don't know, there are three choices. Um, some churches say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Some churches say, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And some churches say, forgive us our trespasses. So there are three legitimate options. All three are used in different places around the world. Um, but I was, I was asked, which word do you use? And the other question I was asked was, are you going to do Humor Sunday? Well, um, I've been here for seven years now. In October, I'll be beginning my eighth year. And I'm proud to say that I've continued that Humor Sunday every Sunday, including during COVID when we were still remote. So in, um, on April 10th, which was um, Wednesday, Vicki Kemper, the pastor of the First Congregational Church in Amherst, Massachusetts, uh, still, a still speaking writer, wrote in the Daily Devotional, and the sign said, I hope you remember that song from the 70s, and the sign said, no, never mind. Um, and she quotes Matthew chapter 12, verse 38 through 39. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. But he answered them, an evil, an adulterous generation asks for a sign. But no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And Vicki writes, who doesn't love a sign? Who doesn't long for a sign, some clear indication, some holy hint that God is real, that life is worth living, that we are not alone? Of what to do and which way to go? Or am I the only one? And what's so evil about wanting a sign anyway? It isn't like, I don't know, human nature or something? Isn't that a longing, a longing, a byproduct of the God-shaped hole in every human heart? Maybe it's just that Jesus was tired of being treated like some second-hand magician. Maybe what Jesus really meant was something like, hello, did you miss my feeding the 5,000? Did you not notice when I gave sight to the blind man or restored the, commu uh, the community to the woman who'd been bleeding for 12 years? How about the little girl you thought was dead? How about the sun that rises every morning? The water that springs from the ground? The trees you didn't plant that bear fruit for you to eat? He could have gone on. But even an exasperated Jesus was, apparently, too polite for that. Instead, he hinted at the greatest sign of all, his coming resurrection. Perhaps we sin not when we ask for a sign but when we miss, dismiss, or worse, deny the signs we've been given. Look around, beloved. What signs of God's love do you see? And Vicki's prayer is, sign, sign, everywhere a sign. Thank you, God, for thinking about me. I'm alive and doing fine. Amen. You know, with the um, eclipse this last Sunday, there was an awful lot of babble going on in social media about, about um, the rapture and things happening and these being signs of the end times and all of that. And I generally look at things like that as kind of like just another conspiracy theory. God tells us we don't know when it's going to happen. Only God knows.
And we shouldn't spend a whole lot of time thinking about it or worrying about it or anything else. It will happen in God's good time, not ours. Please pray with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we're coming down into a little bit more, a little bit more relaxed time, a little, little less furious activity. We know that will change. But I hope that you enjoyed all of the Easter season and all of the things that we've done and the Humor Sunday. And I hope you're looking forward to just some plain worship together with friends. So until I see you again, take good care of each other. Take a good care of yourself. And God bless you, each and every one.